This is ABC 15 Mornings. Bridging the education gap. Statewide closure of all Arizona schools. Two years since everything changed for Arizona kids. Technology not the same for all students. Whatever comes our way, we were able to adapt to it. Without internet, online learning becomes a struggle for some. Teaching during this pandemic. It's been challenging, I will not lie. The many obstacles our educators have faced. Long-term effects. Lost those those close relationships with her teachers and her classmates as well. So much lost in in the virtual learning. More parents are now turning to tutoring. Painting a path forward. It was unlike anything I've ever saw before. It was really, really beautiful. We're all in this together as we work to bridge our education gap. Yes, but there have been so many questions for all of us, teachers, parents, administrators. We're working through this together, figuring out how we got here and where we go from here. But first, we want to say good morning. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Kaylee O'Kelly. And I'm Mixoletti. You lived through it. So many oh, yeah. people watching us right now living through it as well. We'll get to that in just a second. First, let's talk about uh, maybe some of you waking up to some raindrops across the East Valley. Meteorologist Iris Hermosillo joining us right now, tracking that for us, Iris. Yeah, good morning, guys. We've got a storm system finally moving into our state. It's the one that brought the winds yesterday, and today it's bringing rain and snow, but it's really, really light rain. I can tell you so far enough to maybe wet that ground just slightly, giving us a little shimmer on those roadways. Right now, we've got a shower between Chandler and Queen Creek, a little bit of light rain out in Glendale. Now, I want to show you, though, to our South, you're starting to see things fill in a little bit more down near Sacatone. Some of that light rain will push into the East Valley here over the next hour or two. So maybe you need those windshield wipers a couple times on your way into work. Not sh should not be a significant impact, but again, some light rain on some of those roadways and in the high country. You see that blue. We're tracking some snow this morning. Now the rain chances will continue through the morning drive. Our temperature in the 50s to start the day and a very slow warm up. In fact, today much, much cooler than just a couple days ago with a high of 62 degrees. We'll be clearing out though and drying out by this afternoon. Now we'll talk about how much snow we're going to get across the high country and I'm already watching our next storm that's going to bring more rain and snow. I'll show you that in that super seven day forecast. 602 throughout this pandemic, our schools had to learn as they went when it came to navigating major changes like virtual learning. Moms and dads had to do that too. So this morning, our Nohalani Graf, she's taking a look back at how we got here and how we move forward to bridge the education gap. Good morning. Good morning, Kaylee. Well, this is where it started for so many of us laptops out at the kitchen table. But as we've moved on, health, safety, politics have often been at odds when it comes to deciding what's best for Arizona's kids. But that's not necessarily something new here in Arizona. Until now, about a week was the longest kids were forced out of the classroom in Arizona. That was 2018, when teachers walked out in the Red for Ed fight for funding. It's about their success and it's about their future. Fast forward two years, fears over spreading coronavirus start closing classrooms. March 13th, the state lets districts decide whether to close after spring break, and some do. Within two days, the governor and state superintendent switch gears, ordering all schools to go remote for two weeks. At that point, Arizona has 13 confirmed cases. A statewide closure of all Arizona schools. Five more days, the closure is extended to April. Until Friday, April 10th. And by month's end, more than 11,000 COVID cases spurs the decision to close campuses until the end of the school year. We're there to create safe environments for kids to learn in, and now we don't have that. Districts scramble to bridge inequities and in access, passing out laptops. Two computers at home, but it was four of us. Figuring out how to keep serving food for students whose only meal comes from school, a patchwork of learning. But at this point, students mostly concerned with missing out on sports, prom, graduation goes virtual. It's really different. September 2020, the COVID count surpasses 200,000, and this school year is a mixed bag. Kids go back and forth from learning on their couches to classrooms and remote again. They need to make a decision. Working parents form learning pods. But now vaccines are available, and school districts start hosting events to get teachers to roll up their sleeves in hopes of shifting to a full return. What we can to accelerate the closing of that gap. Finally, August. 
August 2021, the first day of school with a hint of what we knew it to be. All kids on campus. Outbreaks still rampant thanks to the Delta variant, 166 schools with cases. Phoenix Union points to science requiring masks. Others follow suit. But the governor plays political science. There are no masks. Mandates. Banning mask requirements, an order later overruled in court. It's causing a lot of infighting in communities. Here we are in 2022, the first month headlined by Omicron. High school sports games postponed. Teachers out sick, struggles to staff classrooms, a 40% positivity rate, but only one district pulling out the laptops again. Everyone else riding out this latest wave. Because if we've learned anything the last two years, it's things can and will change faster than you can log on to Zoom. Now, one thing that hasn't changed, the budget, which some would argue is at the root of achievement problems in Arizona. The K-12 through budget has never been restored to pre-recession levels. In the meantime, the governor prioritizing federal funds for schools that didn't impose COVID requirements, now fighting with the feds over that. He is, however, spending $27 million on summer learning camps for low-income students who want to attend to catch up. And then there are state legislators who have to address a budget cap by March 1st or layoffs and cuts are inevitable, according to the state superintendent, bringing us full circle to the pre-pandemic classroom concerns. By the way, Nick, state Senate will take up that budget cap issue today. And no, hey, it's not just Valley schools, of course. The Navajo Nation was once a global hotspot for COVID infections. To make matters worse, basic things like running water and electricity are scarce on parts of the reservation, meaning schools had to get creative to make sure students kept learning. I recently spoke to a few of the teachers up there. The beauty of the Navajo Nation spread out over 25,000 square miles in an area roughly the same size as West Virginia. It's home to more than 170,000 people, many living without resources a lot of us take for granted. It was really hard, very stressful. Kaylee Nakadene is a fifth grade teacher at Tuba City Elementary, the same school she attended as a little girl. According to a recent study from the American Indian Policy Institute at ASU, less than half of homes on tribal lands of the U.S. have access to broadband internet, making virtual learning a challenge for so many in places like Tuba City. And it wasn't just the students who struggled. A lot of the teachers, too, they live like in places where their connection's not that great. Did you ever have to go to, I don't know, a, a restaurant or a store with Wi-Fi and then upload it that way? Yeah, I think I did that a couple of times. To make matters worse, with cell service spotty on the Navajo Nation, the district says for some students, hot spots weren't even an option. Paper packets took the place of computers. Are you worried that some students have slipped through the cracks because of that? Um, in the beginning, I was. Superintendent the... Dr. Terry Maurer tells me currently 85% of the district's 1,500 students are back in the classroom. And for the other 15%, it means keeping in close contact with Navajo families to make sure they have the resources they need. Everybody's willing to help, whether it's the chapter house, uh, whether it's the, the, the council delegates. You know, that's the one thing that's there. The, the helping hands. Uh, what's not there is the, the large infrastructure projects that, that could make a difference. On the Navajo Nation, currently roughly 25% of homes don't have electricity, according to a recent report from Arizona Public Radio. And roughly 30 to 40% don't have running water. That's what President Jonathan Nez told me in July of 2020. When I was there, I saw for myself how these challenges make life more difficult. It had to be hard. It had to weigh on all of you to still have that drive to carry out the mission, but to have all these roadblocks in the way. Right, right. It was it was really tough. Whatever comes our way, we were able to adapt to it, try our best to work around it. We still are. Um, so I think that's our biggest strength at this point that I see throughout our reservation. So much resilience on the Navajo Nation and our tribal communities. Now, the superintendent told me they are starting to see more projects beginning on the Navajo Nation. The federal government earmarked more than $11 billion from the new infrastructure package for tribal lands, including $2 billion to improve access to broadband Internet.
Well, we turn now here at 609 to a death investigation. It is now underway after a ski accident at Snow Bowl in Flagstaff. Coconino County Sheriff's Office still tight lipped about the details on this, but they are sharing. A 61 year old man from Minnesota was rushed off the mountain yesterday with severe head trauma. The ski patrol we've learned attempted life saving efforts, but the man did not survive. Well, this country is seeing a big drop when it comes to cases of coronavirus. The number of infections down and get this 44% from last week and that trend continuing here in Arizona as well. Our seven day average is now just above 4000 with about 1700 cases reported Tuesday. Happening right now, a special hike up Piestawa Peak, not just once, but 10 times in a row. Timothy Bolin leading the group here as part of his effort to raise awareness and funding for terminal cancer. He started the nonprofit Together We Live after being diagnosed with stage four lymphoma. This is the third year for his FU cancer climb. Up next on ABC 15 mornings, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine taking another step in the wrong direction. They trusted their contractor and are now struggling to get their money back. I'm investigator Joe Ducey with what happened and how they hope their stories help you. And in our next half hour, more of our bridging the education gap coverage. We take an in-depth look at the growth of tutoring as well as the social skills too many kids have missed out on. 610 taking you to the ABC 15 live drive. You see that rain there on the windshield and those windshield wipers working away this morning. The ABC 15 live drive is in the East Valley. We'll check in to see if there's any issues on your commute in this area coming up. New for you this morning, NATO allies are meeting as the world waits to see if Russia will invade Ukraine. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin will attend the two day meeting where leaders We'll discuss options to ease tensions. President Joe Biden has warned a war between Ukraine and Russia will likely affect American energy prices. Well, prosecutors want the former Minnesota police officer convicted in the death of Dante Wright locked up in prison for seven years. Kim Potter is sentenced or is set to be sentenced Friday. It was last April when she ended up shooting Dante Wright during a traffic stop, claiming she mistook her gun for her taser. And starting tomorrow, Disneyland and Disney World will no longer require vaccinated visitors to mask up indoors. Now, they will have to be worn while traveling on enclosed transportation. Home improvement projects can be expensive. Once you choose a contractor, sign and then give them a deposit. Your fate and your money is in their hands. So all new this morning, the Let's Go Know team breaks down the warning signs to look out for before you hire. <laughs> A new shower installed. The tub removed and a walk in shower. It's why Darlene's mom hired Bath Logic and gave them what they demanded half the money up front. She gave it by check okay. and it was $3,500. Okay. And she says she got nothing for it. Kathy also hired Bath Logic, who she says talked up their work for her new shower. And they had, of course, new composite materials that don't leak, blah, blah, blah. She says the business also pushed her for a 50% deposit. I normally put it on a credit card, but this time I wrote a check. She paid them $6,000. That's the last we saw of anything or anyone. Pushing for cash payment and demanding half of the money up front. Two warning signs when you're choosing a contractor. But there's another one here that you wouldn't know unless you checked. The state says Bath Logic didn't have a license to do the work. The Arizona Register of Contractors says Bath Logic is an unlicensed business, partially owned by Tammy Denise Robinson. We've told you about Robinson's other business, Remod AZ. Its contractor's license was revoked. The state's showing it has 29 discipline cases and 22 still being investigated. Many are complaints about paying for work they didn't get. But Kathy and Darlene say they got a lot of excuses. We thought you were going to be on shipment number six. Oh, yeah, it's still in the works. But COVID, you're going to be pushed back again one more time. They and others say they were constantly led to believe the work would be done. It kept some from filing complaints until it was too late. So then we took a ride over to their office or their building, their strip mall office, and completely cleaned out. Nothing there. So check contractors' licenses and do not pay too much money up front. Both Darlene and Kathy hope their stories help you, and both are trying to get money back through the ROC. Go to abc15.com slash let Joe know for more on that recovery fund and more information about hiring a contractor. I'm investigator Joe Ducey. You got a problem? Let me know.
ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Time check for you, 617 on your Wednesday morning. Hi there, I'm Megan Thompson, and as you can see right here with my maps behind me, we have merged the weather radar and those traffic maps to see where rain might be falling very lightly. Iris will be here with a check of that most accurate forecast in just a moment, but we know sometimes the rain, no matter how light, can cause some issues out on your roadways. As I take you to a view of your maps, we notice that we have some light rain there reported in the East Valley and a little bit there in the northwestern part of the valley. Right now, your speeds on the 17 right around 60 miles per hour. You're slowing just a little bit near Bethany Home Road, near Camelback Road, and that slowing is beginning on the Loop 101 southbound as you're getting onto the 10 and the 10 eastbound itself. Starting now in the West Valley at this point of the morning, making your way all the way to the stack, you'll be tapping those brakes. And this is a live view for you of the I-10 near 43rd Avenue, where those headlights are out and about in a chunk of the East Valley, where Iris has been tracking that rain for the most part this morning. That looks all clear for you if you're about to head out the door. Here are those desert drive times. We have gone into the yellow here on the I-10 eastbound from the Loop 303 to the mini stack. That's checking in at 30 minutes. Now with a more detailed look of that most accurate forecast, let's check in with meteorologist Iris Hermosillo to see what we can expect with the rain and snow across the state. So this morning, expect that rain to continue off and on in spots across the valley through the morning drive. The storm system finally pushing into our state. It's the one that brought those gusty winds across Arizona yesterday. That area of low pressure, the core of it, just to our southwest, still producing some rain and snow in California, but now bringing more of that rain and snow across our state. And again, you can kind of see that core right just southwest of Yuma on our water vapor imagery. There you see that counterclockwise spin. That area of low pressure is what's prompting these showers. And essentially, the most action is happening right now in central Arizona, from Pima County up to Pinal County, even parts of Maricopa County, and to our north into Coconino and Gila County, getting some of those snow showers in the areas in blue. So let's start there along the I-17 east of Sedona. We've got a little bit of light snow as that changeover happens in spots above 5,000 feet. 4,500 to 5,000 feet is where those snow levels be, will be as we go through the day today. Also getting some of that snow near Payson now as those snow levels have fallen. Areas near Young getting some of that light snow and southwest of Payson getting some of that snow too. So as you head out the door in the high country and again areas above 4,500 to 5,000 feet know that you could get some of that snow that could lead to some slick spots, especially along the eastern rim and White Mountains today. We also have been tracking some rain down near Superior. A few lightning strikes there. That's where the rain has been a little bit heavier, but for the valley, it's been really light. And as you look at Desert Doppler radar, I mean, we're in that dark green. So as you look, it's really just that light rain that we're seeing in spots like Ahwatukee and Chandler. A little bit of sprinkling on your windshield. Maybe you need those windshield wipers a couple times. We get a shimmer on those roads, but so far not seeing any heavy rain, and I don't anticipate that. I think we're going to continue to see this trend of light rain working its way through. We've got more to the south that will push into the East Valley, so the rain will continue through the morning drive, but it's going to be really light. As you look at future cast, we'll keep that snow potential around the high country through the day today into tonight and even tomorrow. But for the valley, look what's happening by four o'clock this afternoon. We're already clearing, so we've got rain this morning, drying this afternoon, and as much as just about a tenth of an inch of rain in spots that do get measurable rain in the valley. One to three inches in spots above 5,500 feet when it comes to that snow and winds lighter today. Just some breezes in the high country as we go through the afternoon. Look at temperatures though, much, much cooler than they were just a couple days ago. 82 on Monday today, down to 62 degrees. Then we start to rebound and we'll be back into the low 70s by Friday. And it looks like mid to upper 70s through the weekend. But look what's happening in that seven day forecast. Another storm on the way next week brings more rain, more snow, another cool down. We'll talk about those hour by hour forecast next. 621 interactive exhibits to inspire both kids and adults at 625. The Southwest Maker Fest lands on your bulletin board. Then coming up at 632, all nine Phoenix police officers injured in last week's shootout and barricade situation. They are thankfully recovering, but there are a lot of questions this morning about their safety and borrowed drones from another department. Why changes could happen today. And adapting to a new normal at 645 as we work to bridge the education gap. I visit one Phoenix neighborhood for a firsthand look at how virtual learning has evolved over the past two years. 625 on our bulletin board this morning, an event letting local creators and musicians show off their skills. After taking a hiatus last year, the annual Southwest Maker Fest returns to downtown Mesa this weekend. The free festival lets guests get hands on with all kinds of art, science and technology projects. Booths will be set up with things like 3D printing, 
fiber arts, glass flame working, and also Lego building. You can catch performances from Alice Cooper's Solid Rock Teen Center in Mesa. This runs from 10 to 4 as part of the event. You can also get 50% off admission to the Natural History and Idea Museums. A day of celebrating innovation. That's on today's bulletin board. It is 625. We've got a lost lovey here. This little guy needs to find his way home. You see this stuffed animal, recognize it? Well, a Gilbert Park Ranger is hoping to reunite that gray bunny with its rightful owner. Oh, it's so loved, right? This thing was found near the playground of Gilbert Regional Park on Saturday. That was Saturday night, actually, with a small plaid jacket. I know how important those things are to my grandkids, so I'm sure it's very important to whatever child owns this little Mr. Bunny Rabbit. All right, Mr. Bunny is at the lost and found in Gilbert. If you think you might know who he belongs to, call the Ranger line. That number 480-503-6263. We've also posted it on abc15.com. Next at 630, kids and parents across the state really feeling the pandemic's impacts on learning. Coming up, we go in depth on bridging the education gap and how it's different for different communities across our state. And then bouncing back in a huge way, the wedding industry trying to keep up with all the couples who are ready to get hitched. And a call to action after Friday's shootout with Phoenix police coming up at 630. What some city council members are asking for at today's meeting. Light rain and snow falling around our state right now, but by this afternoon, look at how much cooler it's going to be across the state. 30s up north, 60s for highs here in the valley. We'll talk about where the rain is now and what to expect for the rest of today.